Today we're solving the cube one side at a time. There are a lot of methods you could come up with that would be pretty stupid if you knew how to solve the cube and you'd be able to tell why that would be a bad idea. Solving the cube one side at a time like white, green, orange, and so on is not a good idea if you know how to solve cubes. But it's a thought we've all had at some point and I hate to admit it, but I have been stuck on a cube for weeks before I knew how to solve this because I tried to do it that way. For those of you new to cubing, the way we usually solve is layer by layer and not one side at a time. If you just glance at it and you're looking at the colors, then the concept looks just like two different ways you could do it, but fundamentally these two methods are very, very different. So when you go one side at a time, you're not solving a lot of these pieces you are solving what looks like a side of colors, but that's just an illusion of looking solved. If you actually look at the way the pieces are built, if you took them out, the edge pieces here are connected to each other. So these white and blue will never detach from each other. Same thing for the corner pieces, except three different colors will not detach from each other. And also there are center pieces and these ones never move and they tell you which side each color belongs on. And if there's a blue center, that means all the blue belongs here. So yes, white belongs here, but red doesn't belong here. So as a piece, it is located in the wrong spot. It should be located between the white and red centers. It took me a while to realize that colors don't move on their own. It's the pieces that move as a unit. That that's when I discovered about making layers, but today we're just going to be making faces. Again, I encourage you to try this on your own because it's a fun, sort of frustrating challenge and you can see just how hard it would be if a beginner actually managed to make progress with this method. Since I'm trying to get into the mindset of a beginner this video, maybe I should swap out for the Rubik's brand. No, not really. I just would take any excuse to make you guys listen to this again. Okay, I'm gonna do my first try here because I actually have not optimized how this is going to work. And I don't wanna be biased to any color, so I will just pick the color with the most solved here. So that's gonna be blue. Um, okay, that's pretty easy, but you know, anyone can make a first face. So the next part is the real challenge. So I'm gonna go with white since it has the most solved. I wanna do this as intuitively as possible. I can immediately see how I can get this one into here using like a beginner second layer algorithm. But if anything can be intuitive, I would like it to be because I'm trying to put myself in the brain of a beginner right now. And I don't like it one bit. So I wanna start by solving this piece. And this is where a beginner might think any of the white could go there, but obviously it's just gonna be this one, the one that also has blue on it. Uh, so I'm just gonna, I would consider this sort of intuitive, just moving this out and then moving it in here. I don't know, maybe like that. And then moving this one in here to keep blue solved. And then now I have this part solved. Then I'm just gonna solve these pieces here. Seems like kind of a problem. An intuitive way I could do it, I guess, is uh, insert the edge here. Okay, so this is starting to look really bad. Like I'm using a lot of cube understanding and still saying this is intuitive, not that a beginner would make sense of this at all. Then I would wanna put this corner back in. And so I would probably like the most intuitive thing I can possibly think of at this moment is just using keyhole, which is like getting this edge out of the way and then moving this one back in and then putting it all back. All right, and there's my piece. Um, let's get another white piece, either one of these two, so I can put this one over here. It really hurts me to say I'm putting this one here just because it's the first one that, I mean, is the easiest one I can move around and it's not the right piece, it's green. But I'm a beginner, so I'm gonna use this one. I guess I'll just use the same keyhole strategy. So put this one in like that and then get this one back into its slot by moving it over, move this one in and going back. So even just making the second side, I'm already having a hard time believing that a beginner could even come up with this. But we're gonna continue and see what we run into because these three pieces, I feel like it's gonna be really interesting. So how can I get this one up here? Well, I can like move it up like that, but then the corner comes out. Uh, What if I just move it out and yeah, this is some beginner alc. I'm just realizing this now, if there are two faces I need to preserve, then any turn I do on the cube will break one of them. So there's nothing like super intuitive I can do. No matter what I do, something that I've solved gets unsolved and I have to resolve it later. So this is, um, this is quite difficult even for me. All right, so I kind of thought of this, move these like that, and then you can combine them here, put them all back, solve blue, but then you have like the same problem on blue. I kind of have a one corner problem no matter what. Okay, I just realized how I can get this blue one in here but it's, um, it's kind of like a commutator, although I didn't come up with it the same way I think of commutators. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is this one can go in here like this, that's the idea here, but it does break up white. So instead of doing that, instead of doing just that, what I'm gonna do is put it in somehow 
and then take, like do the reverse moves to take it back out. So if I put it in and take it back out, then clearly white is restored, right? So what I can do is put this one into a different slot, put it here, and then go back. Now what has changed was when I put it in, it took another blue one out. And then to put this blue one back in, it's just gonna be um, the same, like the reverse moves that fix white. I wasn't thinking about commutators when I came up with that, but I don't know if coming up with that is only because I know commutators. Because I feel like that's a bit of a complex thought to have all at once. So maybe it's only because I know how commutators work that that is what happens. But it's not like I'm gonna go through the rest of this video saying, oh yeah, don't worry about commutators because I cannot imagine a scenario here near the end where I don't end up using commutators. And if you haven't seen the video where I try to solve a four by four like a two by two, then that video just, it just pretty much ends up with commutators because there's too many pieces to preserve and you can't do anything intuitively. All right, so I've got white, I've got blue, I have to go to orange next because my rule is go on to the one with the most solved. Is there any intuitive way, like anytime I move anything, I'm like, oh yeah, white's still all there. And I also have to worry about blue now. Man, I'm just trying to get this here. Okay, so we're at that point in the video. If you don't know what a commutator is, it's just an intuitive way to move around three pieces. For example, I can put this one here and then put this one like here so that it's also orange solved and put this one back over here. So it just like cycles three pieces. Now this video is not to teach you how commutators work. There's one for that if you want, but I'm kind of stuck here because the problem is I obviously don't want to use commutators because if you can do a three cycle here, why would you bother with the whole first two face thing? Why wouldn't you just solve any three pieces over and over? Like you wouldn't need a specific order of pieces that you would solve. Now that's only a problem that comes up if for some reason you're solving one side at a time and you figured out how commutators work. So in order for me to continue, I will not be thinking about this as a beginner doing it anymore. I will just try my best. This goes here, which goes here. So that is a good thing I know three style because I just moved some pieces around using a commutator. Now this goes here. Oh geez. Yeah, we have, we have parity see me using a three style parody algorithm. Great, the cube is solved, I can end the video. Now, nah, but we're gonna keep going. So I just wanna take a break and mention one thing. It's definitely a common thing when you bring up cubing with people that they would say something like, the best I could ever do is solving one side. And for cubers, that's a little funny because if you solve one side without solving the layer, you didn't really accomplish much. But it's fair, we all probably tried that at some point. But then there's the other one where it's like, I could only ever get five sides. I have never heard any non-cubers say that, but I have heard cubers say that non-cubers say that. So no one would tell you they got five. Like even three is a giant stretch. It took me some trouble to get three. You could totally just luck out and get two, but three is very, very hard. Yeah, so that whole solving five sides thing that non-cubers say, I, I don't think they say that, unless you've actually heard someone say that, but I, I don't believe it. I have a little challenge for you guys that you can answer in the comments. Try not to read it uh, or you might be spoiled, but if, you can solve three sides, the cube doesn't have to be solved because the other three sides don't have to be. Now, of course, it's impossible to actually solve five sides without the last one being solved because if you've solved all five and they all have their own color, there's no color remaining for the last side besides its own color. So obviously the whole thing would be solved, but it is possible to only have four sides solved. Can you tell me an algorithm that only leaves four sides solved and maybe the shortest one you can think of? First of all, these two pieces are in the wrong location. So before I get to any three cycles, I'll just do two swaps. So. I guess I can swap these two edges as well as these two. So I can like set them up. Better remember that. Z perm. And then, okay, solve those. Uh, now I need more reds. So this one, if it goes here, then this one goes here. And this one goes back to here. Then it looks like that would solve red. So three style, there we go. Uh, and I'm left with a double two swap. So. Oh no, I've shown you a case where four sides are solved, but do you know an alloc for this? Is it short? All right, how can I solve this efficiently? Uh, if I move them separate like that. And there we go. I solved the whole thing intuitively because like always, I know how to do commutators. Also feel free to leave more challenges and if you wanna learn commentators so you can do anything you want on the 3x3, then go check out that video on the end screen. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time.